Don't start moving your data until you do this. Follow along and you'll be up and running in no time. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be covering several different things. How to create a cache drive, turning on the array auto start, installing the community applications plugin, enabling dockers, creating our first share, going over the SMB security settings, how to browse to our share, and finally, restarting and shutting down our Unraid server. Let's switch over to the screen. And if you're not here already, browse to the IP address that you had put in for your server and the login screen should appear. Go ahead and log in. In our previous video, I had set up three different drives, one for parity and then two for data. I, however, have extra drives left over. I have an SSD drive down here that I want to use for a cache drive. If you do not have an SSD drive for a cache drive, it doesn't really matter. It just helps speed up the system. So to set one up, click on stop, then click proceed. Once the array is stopped, if you scroll down, you will find a section that says pool devices. Click add pool. The name cache is fine. And then however many drives you want to attach to it. In this case, I'm just going to do one. So I will leave it alone and click add. Scroll back down. And now you can drop down and select your SSD drive. Simple as that. Scroll back down, hit start, and it'll start up the array cache drive. And there we have it. The cache drive is right in the center here underneath pooled devices. And it's picked up fine. It shows you the size of the drive. In this case, it's 120 gig SSD for me. Not really much is used right now, 870 megabytes. The 120 gig SSD drive that I have in here is just one that I had laying around. However, if you're in the market for an SSD drive for this, I'd recommend going with the Samsung Evo 87250, I believe is the model. I've been using them at my office for years and those things are rock solid. Five year warranty on them, so they, they do last quite a while. If you're interested in one of those, I'll leave a link in the description below. Next, we're gonna turn on the array auto start. To do that, go up to settings, disk settings, and then the very top option should be enable auto start. It's currently on no, click that, drop down, select yes, scroll to the middle down here and click apply. And that's it, simple one there. Next, we're gonna make sure that the community applications are installed. To do that, click on apps, and then click install. Wait for it to complete and then click done. Hit I understand on the disclaimer, hit I understand on the plugins, and you're all set. This unlocks a huge advantage of using the Unraid system. There's a tremendous amount of dockers available and lots of different applications that you can run on your server. So give it some time and see if there's anything that catches your eye. Now let's create a share. To do that, click on shares, click add share. We are gonna name our first one media. The comment here is if you would like a comment of what that is going to be, let's say default location for all our media files. We're not going to worry about the minimum free space. We'll jump down to the primary storage. So this is asking you where you want to put any of these files that are putting into the media share. In this case, we want to put them on the array, but you can also put them on the cache drive. The allocation method, we're going to do high water on this one. There's three different options here, high water, fill up and most free. Quick and dirty explanation of this is the high water. It will fill up the first drive to about 50% before it jumps to the next drive and then fills that one 50% before it jumps to the next drive. It evens out the data without filling up one drive. The fill up does just that. It starts with the first disk and fills it all the way up. When it's full, it jumps to the next drive. And the most free is kind of the opposite of all of that. It writes data evenly across all the disks, a little bit here, a little bit there, and it tries to get everything so they're all uniformly filled. But in this case, we want to do high water. And for the split level, is it looks at the directory structure and will split accordingly. So on this one, it'll just split anywhere it needs to when it hits that high water mark. In this case, in most cases, I would just leave it on split any directory as required. You want to include all the disks. You can select individual disks. Same thing in the exclusion. You can select which disks you would like to exclude. Once again, just leave it on all. The secondary storage option is to put additional copies of the data crossed onto another array on your system. Finally, the mover action. If you have the data going to a cache drive before it goes to the array, the mover action runs every night on a certain schedule and it will move that data at that point in time. That's it there, click add share. All right, one quick thing to note here. Do you see on the left-hand side underneath the share settings, you will see delete. That option will not be there and not available to select if there's any data on the drive. So if you go back in the future to delete this share and there's media files in there, it won't allow you to do that until it's emptied. Just keep that in mind. If we scroll down here to the SMB security settings, the share name is there, which in this case we called media. The export option. Yes means that it's visible. Yes hidden means that it's shared 
but not visible. The time machine options are for time machine backups on Macs. That doesn't apply to us. So in this case, I'm gonna go yes. And then case sensitive, I just leave that on auto. It's up to you if you want it to be case sensitive or not. And then for security, we've got public, secure, and private. Public means there's no security at all. The folder is open for anybody to access. Secure, on the other hand, is allowed to be read by anybody, but only written by specified users. And then private, both reading and writing are only allowed on specific users, the ones that you specify. I'm gonna choose public here because I want my family to be able to get to these files. Click apply and you're all set. All right, let's browse to our newly created share and see if it works. I'm gonna open File Explorer, click in the address bar, type backslash backslash, and then your Unraid server name. In this case, it's demo. Press enter, and there it is. You can also go backslash, backslash, and then the IP address that you used for your server. In my case, it was 10.0.0.11. Same results. Go ahead and double click on media, right click anywhere in that window, and select new folder, and name it photos. Press enter, double click into that one, and now you can start dragging family photos in. I'm gonna do a couple cute ones of my cat and dog here. Let's see if we can open them. And look at that, it works. All right, now let's see if we can delete out of there. Once again, click on your file, hit delete. There you go, you've got complete access to browse to your files, add files, and delete them. And that's how you set up a share. Go ahead and go back to shares here. Click add and add as many as you would like. One last thing to cover, and that's how to shut down and restart the server. Go up to dashboard, and the first items that you see right on the top here are gonna be the options you're looking for. The double little arrows going in a circle chasing each other is the reboot system, and the standard power button icon is the one you want to shut it down. And there you have it. Now you should be up and running with Unraid. In the next video, we're gonna dive into the interface tour of Unraid. We'll see you then.